So I am still trying to figure out this issue with the ABS and the wheel speed sensors. This has been a process. So I've replaced all four wheel speed sensors. I did a KI test on the instrument cluster to make sure everything worked on the instrument cluster, passed with flying colors. And Friday, yesterday, the uh, speedometer just started working again randomly. Then it stopped. So it's definitely like an intermittent thing. I checked the ASC module, which is connected to the ABS unit. Could be something with that, but all the connections looked fine. No corrosion, nothing weird like that. Ruled that out. Um, we did plug it in at the shop and the car was unable to read the ABS module for whatever reason. So definitely could be dealing with a faulty ABS module. And I was just testing my new wheels on the car test fitting. And I'll show you guys them in a second. But when I pulled out the wheel speed sensor on on the right side, I noticed that there's a lot of brake grease on it. So it's possible that when whoever did the brakes on this car last, they used too much brake pad grease and that can clog up the journals and the actual speed sensor itself, prohibiting it from actually reading the rotational speed of the wheel. So it could be something like that. And that would kind of make sense being that it's like intermittent, like it's going in and out. It could be the grease just kind of moving around. There was a lot of it on the right side. There was a little bit of it on the left side. So I'm basically just cleaning out those journals as best as possible so the sensor can get a really clear read. Should have done that the first time. I just assumed that wasn't it. Dumb of me. But before I go ahead and spend the money to just buy another ABS unit, I'm going to do this first and see what happens. I have a feeling like this might be it. But before I drop this down, I'm going to throw on the new wheel that I test fitted, show you guys what it looks like. It's in really rough condition. They have to get refinished, but dude, they look great on the car. Hell yeah, dude. Style 65s. I love these wheels, man. So I'm running a nine and a half. I'm basically running a rear on all four corners. It is thick and it's like a 22, I believe, offset. Dude, the fitment is gonna be so good, you guys. Once you see the tires and everything, I'm telling you, this is gonna be so good. So the only way that you can do this on these cars is you have to run a very, very small spacer. Most people run like a three mil, but I'll probably go with a five millimeter spacer. And this could change depending on your suspension setup. I'm on stock suspension, obviously, right now. So um, this is what works with this. I'm gonna be running this wheel, which is an 18 by nine and a half on all four corners, and we're gonna run a 265 35 18. That'll be a really nice, like meaty, squared off setup on all four corners, and it's gonna be so good. It's also gonna change the way that the car feels, handles, even the steering, everything. It's gonna change the whole thing. And the other nice part about that is when I swap tires, I can rotate them. I don't have to buy different sizes and all that. It just makes everything a lot easier. But for these cars, man, this is the way to go, in my opinion. So as you can see, right now, <laughs> it spins, but yeah, it's, it's super close. It rubs just a hair. So the only way that you can really do this is by running a little bit of a spacer. Also, you will see, dude, these are in rough shape. BMW actually doesn't make the rear wheel anymore for the Style 65s. Like these are becoming more and more rare, very, very difficult to find. Luckily, I had a connection on a guy who just basically hoards like E39 M5 parts and he had a set of these and was willing to ship them to me. And of course, I'm obviously gonna have them refinished. So Prince Wheels here in North Carolina does a really, really good job at matching the original OE shadow chrome color on these wheels. It's not a hundred percent identical obviously but it's really really close so we are going to have them do that and it's actually not too bad they charge 200 a wheel which i thought it was going to be more 200 a wheel to get these refinished like 99 percent factory finish man they're going to look so freaking good on this car dude i am so excited to run these i don't mind the style fives you guys but dude these just fit this car so good and once you see it on the ground with everything you'll see the vision Got the other three in the car. <laughs> Should you keep them red? <laughs> they look ridiculous in red. The third one is crazy how bad it is. 
think someone tried to start refinishing this. They used like a thinner on it and uh, just gave up halfway. <laughs> it looks pretty freaking atrocious. The red is hilarious. Just keep the red and rock it. So it's becoming more and more difficult to find these wheels. Um, and if you do, they're, they're taxed, dude. They are charging a lot for these. So pretty fortunate that I was able to find four at like a really, really fair price, in my opinion, shipped and everything. So yeah, that's gonna be the new setup. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the cleaning on these sensors. Let's see if we can get this damn thing working, man. I'm chasing down these things, man. These cars also have a rotational speed sensor, a yaw sensor, it's called. Dude, I had the entire interior out of this car yesterday because on the E39s, the yaw sensor is supposed to be under the carpet, like over here somewhere. Mine's not there. This car doesn't even have one. I don't know if it was removed at some point. However, I don't think it was removed because there's no cables or plugs leading up to it, no connections, nothing like that. So kind of stumped there. Um, just decided, just obviously put everything back together and said, not gonna go that route. I think it might be different if your car has ASC versus DSC. This is an ASC car. So I think that rotational speed sensor might be either in a different location or it's non-existent on these cars. I really don't know. But the reason I bring that up is some people were saying that water would get in under the carpet and it would corrode that module, which would also make sense with like an intermittent issue. It could be corroded. I won't have time to do that today though because we're actually going to get this car tinted. Not always the biggest fan of tinting these older cars, but this is my daily. And dude, the sun is just insane in North Carolina. So I think I'm gonna do a 35% all around. And um, yeah, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Oh, should we go with the red, dude? <laughs> That is ridiculous. Oh man, what was going through his head when he decided to go with this color? That is crazy. Looking like a McDonald's mobile. If you have ever wanted a chance to own one of the most legendary BMW M cars, the E92 M3, this is your opportunity. Senkau Motorsports is running a giveaway on a 70K mile DCT jet black S65 powered E92 M3. They are building it up with a bunch of carbon bits, a bunch of performance modifications. This thing is going to be sick. And if you want to get entered to win this car, make sure you either pick up a hoodie that will get you four entries, pick up a t-shirt that will get you two entries, and every single other item on their website that you purchase will get you one entry into winning this Jet Black E92 M3. The merch is actually super dope. I'm wearing the off-white tee right now. This one right here is the Built for Perfection E92 M3 DTM inspired shirt. This thing is super dope. The quality is killer on this merch too. This is the Sen Cal Motorsports signature hoodie. It's like a forest green with an off-white text. Looks really good. And then this is the E92 M3 inspired hoodie on the end here. If you guys want to get entered into winning the giveaway, your best chances are picking up merch. But of course, if you just want to pick up parts, you get one entry per order. So make sure you guys enter the giveaway before October 15th. You can buy as much merch as you want. There's no limit on how many entries each person can get, but the deadline is October 15th. So make sure you get those orders in, boost your chances in winning this E92 M3. It is a really, really nice spec. Jet black, DCT, and you better believe that I'm gonna be entering this too, because honestly, you can never have too many E92 M3s in the garage. I'll have it linked down below in the description. Make sure you guys check it out. Let's get back into the video. <laughs> This is by far the longest I've ever had to diagnose an issue on a car. <laughs> it's been like four days now. I've been trying to figure this out. I also appreciate a lot of you guys who were commenting on the last video, helping me out. Definitely a lot of good insight in there. And uh, you know, no one's perfect. Everyone's learning along the way. Let's see. Not looking good. Not looking good, fellas. It's so weird how like sometimes it just works and sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> It's like, what in the world is your deal? Again, we did the KI test too, and um, that didn't change anything. All right, I didn't clean the rears yet, so now I'm gonna clean out the rears and we'll see what happens. All right, man, Ooh, rears are cleaned out. I don't know, man, I don't have high hopes. Same boat as last time, right? You guys are like, Jesus, man, how long is it gonna take this guy to figure it out? Well, I think I know what it is. I'm just trying other things before I have to spend money. <laughs> I mean, uh, the fact that our computers will not connect with the ABS module kind of tells me everything I need to know but you know I just want to see if it's something stupid that's always possible yeah, no nope, nothing 
no speedo. This is the um, the part that nobody wants to do. All of the diagnosing, all of this stuff, man, it just takes forever to figure it out sometimes. And yeah, you can go plug it into the computer if the car is communicating with the computer. This car is unfortunately not communicating with the computer. We can't reach the ABS unit, which obviously there's a problem with the ABS unit and that is tied into the um, wheel speed sensors and the speedometer and all of that. I think ultimately I'm just gonna bite the bullet and buy a new ABS unit and <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully that um, solves our issue. But let's head over to the tint shop and get this thing tinted. Like I said, man, I'm not the biggest fan of tint in these cars and these older cars. But being that this is my daily, there's just so much light that comes in here with all these windows. I just want to see like 35% on it. Nothing too crazy. I think it'll look really good. Get these rates down, more people, that we can get the housing market sort of stimulated again because it's been pretty stagnant lately. All right, so here's why we bring this up. Must be a good day. Speedometer is officially working. <laughs> it seems that it begins to work when the car sits overnight and then on that first start, it'll work. But after I've been driving it for a while and I park this thing and I restart it, it will not work, I promise you. So I'm just gonna enjoy this moment for the next 20 minutes that I get to drive. <laughs> oh man, it's the weirdest issue. I'm going to get a voltage meter and I'm gonna test some of the pins on the ABS unit. That should give us some more answers. All right, here it is, you guys. Tinted 35% all around. I didn't do anything on the windshield. Might end up throwing like a 75% at the windshield. Honestly, this is a perfect, perfect tint for this car. It's not too dark, it's not too light. Looks a little bit darker right now because I'm in the shade but you can still see through which I wanted I didn't want to have to deal with like super super dark film on this car and like I said man most of the time I wouldn't even bother tinting an older car like this because I really do like the fishbowl look but with this being my daily it sort of just kind of made sense for this car and I actually think it looks really good keep it a little bit cooler on the inside and as I update the interior it'll obviously help you know with the longevity and keeping that interior nice and in good condition. Wagon's looking great, man. Loving wagon life. I'm literally in the middle of relocating storage units. So this thing is coming in clutch, dude. Really, really helps when you have all of this stuff that you're constantly moving around. Anyways, we are going to wrap this one up, you guys. I have more work to do, obviously, on the wagon. And I'll let you guys know what I figure out with this whole ABS unit thing. And this is the last video I'm going to make on it. I'm done filming this process. When I figure out the resolution, I'll share it with you guys. 99% sure it's the ABS unit so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it but as always I appreciate you guys I'll see you in the next one peace out